Hi everybody, Andrew here. So in this video, we, we're going to talk about transform spaces. Now, uh, in order to explain what transform spaces are, uh, you've probably already used them in the Unity editor, uh, where you can switch between the global and local transform spaces right here. Yeah. So when the global transform space is activated, um, the, the gizmo will always be rotated to, so that its axes are aligned with the world axis, right? But if I switch to local and click on, let's say, this object right here, you can see that the gizmo will be uh, will be aligned. Um, it, it will be rotated such that its axes are aligned with the object local axis, right? So this is what well, this is what we're gonna be implementing in this um, in this tutorial. I'm gonna show you how you can actually change the transform space of a gizmo. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna support two uh, two hotkeys: the G hotkey for setting the transform space to global, and the L hotkey for setting the transform space to local. So I'm going to say private void set transform space gizmo space transform space and I'm going to say object move gizmo set transform space transform space uh, and we're going to do the same for the other gizmos like rotation gizmo, scale gizmo and universal gizmo. Yeah, so the most important piece of information here is the set transform space function, which belongs to the object transform gizmo class, yeah, which basically changes the transfer space, changes the transfer space of the gizmo. Um, and yeah, we, we basically implemented this, this function that uh, receives a gizmo space parameter. Yeah, so the gizmo space parameter is just of type gizmo space, which is an enum that contains uh, two values, global and local. Um, and we just use this value to set transfer space for all gizmos. And now what we need to do is we need to go to the to, to our update function and we need to check uh, the keyboard input if input dot get key down uh, key code dot g then uh, set transfer space uh, gizmo space dot uh, global right. So we use the g key to set the transfer space to global. And uh, we use the L key to set the transfer space to local. Right. So now, if I switch to play mode, you might you might be expecting that we get the same behavior, right? The problem is that we don't. Um, so basically, uh, this is actually intentional. Yeah, the, the, the fact that we, we're not getting the same results. Yeah, the gizmo, sorry, currently we're working in global mode. Let me just press L. Yeah, I'm, I pressed L, now we should be in local space. So when I click on one of these objects, the gizmo should be rotated according to, you know, um, I mean, it, it should inherit the object rotation. Its axis should be aligned with the object axis. But that doesn't happen. And uh, there's a good reason for that. Um, the, the thing is, in order to to accomplish that uh, that result, um, the gizmo needs to have access to a, a to another piece of information called the target the object target uh, the, sorry the target pivot object. Um, the target pivot object is the object that will be used to actually. Uh, inherit the rotation from and this piece of information is necessary because you you, you know uh, you can actually have multiple objects selected yeah you can have multiple target objects so the gizmo needs to know what is the object that you want me to inherit the rotation from and let me show you what happens in unity yeah so for example in unity uh, I have the local transform people uh, local transform space activated yeah and if I hold down the control key and select a different object you can see that uh, the the gizmo will inherit the rotation of the last object that we clicked on so in the unity editor the target pivot object is actually the last object that we clicked on yeah and this is the same thing that we're going to do in this video we're going to set the target pivot object to the last object we clicked on and i'm going to use i'm going to do that right here um where gizmo set target pivot set uh, pivot set target pivot object selected objects count 
minus 1. So what we're doing here is we're accessing the last element. Yeah, the last element of the selected objects collection is selected objects that count minus 1 because indices start from 0, so we need to subtract 1. Yeah, so we're accessing the last selected object and then we're calling the set target pivot object for the work gizmo. Uh, now, let me just check if, yeah. Well, uh, so I, yeah, I'm pressing F12 here. I'm looking at the implementation of the set target pivot object, and I can see that it already calls this refresh position and rotation function. So we no longer need to call this. Yeah, uh, we can uh, we can just call set target pivot object because refresh position and rotation will, automat will automatically be called by the set target pivot object. All right, and now if I switch to play mode. Uh, I'm gonna so currently the global the global space is active yeah but if I press the L key you can see that when I click on an object the gizmo will actually inherit the rotation of that object yeah so this is the this is what uh, we wanted to achieve in this video to be able to change the transform space of, of a gizmo um, it might seem yeah so no, basically uh, the most important thing is to just call the set transform space of the gizmo and then just don't forget to call set target pivot object. Yeah, this is just an unnecessary evil. I'm not really a huge fan of, um, like when you call set transform space, um, it, it should automatically, you know, um, behave like it's using that, the, the, you know, like the, the transfer space that you specified. But in this particular case, we just need this additional piece of information. Yeah, uh, we need to specify the target pivot object. Uh, which is not really hard to do. Like most of the times you're gonna have like the same type of thing here. You're gonna have the same, you know, you're gonna have like a list of objects and then you can just specify the less selected objects. We, we could we, we could just specify the first selected object here. Yeah, we could specify an index of zero and it would still work. We just use the first selected object. Um, yeah, all right, so that's, that's it for this video. Um, now, starting with the next video, we're gonna talk about uh, transfer pivots, yeah? Uh, so transfer pivots, uh, like um, basically in the Unity editor, you have here pivot and, and center. Now in RTD, in RTG, so uni the Unity editor has two pivots. It, RTG actually has five pivots. Yeah, so we're gonna start. Uh, we're gonna. Um, I'm, I'm actually gonna make like several video tutorials for different transfer pivots and show you how they work and in what situations you might uh, decide to to use them. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I wish you a nice day. Bye bye.